Hi, I'm Dr. Matt. I'm a chiropractor at Healthy Kids and Family Chiropractic in Markham. I'd like to go over a stress management workshop because uh, that's an important topic, uh, especially this past year with uh, all the increase in fear, anxiety, and stress that's been going on in society. Uh, you know the power that made the body? It heals the body, and that happens from above down, inside out. We're exposed to three kinds of stresses all the time. So that's physical, chemical, and emotional stresses. So physical stresses, that's like the birth process, slip and falls, poor posture, accidents. Uh, you know, uh, actually, kids before the age of seven fall an average of 2,500 times. And there was uh, this study by this German authority, Dr. Gutmann, found that 800 out of 1,000 infants checked during that first month of life had subluxations directly related to birth. So chemical stresses, that's cleaning chemicals, drugs, poor nutrition, sugars, caffeine, alcohol, pollution, that leads to a whole host of, uh, of health problems there. Emotional, mental, and spiritual stresses, uh, that could be problems with relationships in the family, at home, work, loss, uh, poor adaptation, uh, and emotional st stresses are uh, really harmful when they're unrelenting. Stresses can be either predictable, so so that's expected regarding issues at hand, so that's like work, financial, family, and stresses can also be non-predictable. That could be things that arise out of our control, like death, crisis, injuries, you know, illnesses, and continuous type of stresses are those non-ordinary issues that we experience on a regular basis, and those are the ones that are really harmful when they just don't stop. So here's the current stress situation. Physically, we experience 30 times more stress than 100 years ago, and that's mainly due to our hypermobile lifestyle. Emotionally speaking, 400 times more stress than 100 years ago, and chemically, 300 times more than 100 years ago. You know, there was a US study that I read just a little while ago, and people were 55% more stressed in May of 2020 than in January of that same year. And there's a Canadian survey last uh, May that showed that Ontarians were also the most stressed out in of any province. So how much does the human physiology and adaptation qualities change? It's only 0.07%. So we're experiencing three to 400 times more stress, but our physiology only changes by 0.07%. Not so good of a change, eh? So stress, it's an internal thing. Stressors do not automatically lead to a stress reaction. So different people react differently to the same stressors. And, and why is that? Well, the answer is because it's the perception of the situation. So whether a person feels stressed depends on whether the person thinks or perceives that they can cope with that situation. That's why we need to change on the inside. So don't blame anyone for your stress. Right, stress is a personal internal reaction or it's an internal conflict and that's a, res a response to the external or the internal environment. Uh, and that's to why we have to uh, change on the inside if we want to change that level of stress. So where is that stress coming from? That could be from some false beliefs, it's high expectations and it's comparing. That's you know when you're on social media and you're always looking at other people's lives and you're comparing yourself to them. Uh, that's running on empty tanks, not getting enough rest and just trying to do too much. That's selfishness, just having those wrong motiv motivations and doing things alone as well too. So it's important to have a, a team behind you. Uh, and that's knowing and not doing. And what about doing but not keeping up? That's also a source of stress as well too. If you're cheating, if you're doing things to impress others all the time, that's you know feelings of entitlement and judgment. So how do we respond to stresses? If you allow others to make you stress, you're allowing them to control you. So do you want others to be pulling your strings? Stress is like energy. Are you gonna use this energy for something productive or something destructive? That's the difference between you stress and distress. So you stress is a healthy kind of stress. That's what gets us out of the bed in the mornings, that makes us pay attention to the details throughout the day. Uh, that type of stress doesn't cause anger or irritability. Uh, but distress, that's the negative kind of stress. It's that That's the kind of stress that leads people to be irritable, maybe angry, and when the stress is too much, and it's no longer a motivator. Okay, so 
what are the responses here? So if you're angry, that could lead to violence and seduction. If you're frustrated, it leads to depression. If you're in denial, that leads to addictions. Uh, that outside-in reaction leads to disease. If you're disappointed, that leads to arguments and complacency. So here's your piece of homework. Identify uh, the responses to your stress. Okay, take a few minutes, think about that, and uh, then you can help to uh, figure out how to, you know, alter and, and change those kinds of habits. I'd like to introduce you to the concept of the above down inside out. Now we talked about that uh, in the chiropractic way, uh, talking about above down inside out where your brain that controls a function, healing and recreation of all your organs, tissues and cells happens from above down. The energy flows down through the spinal cord, out through all those 33 pairs of nerves and that affects all your organs, tissues and cells in your body. Okay, now we should think of ourselves as spiritual beings who have a soul and live in a body. You know, the human spirit is the deepest part of a person. That's how we talk to God in the spiritual realm. It's through our spirit that God can be realized uh, by us. And the spirit has this highest authority. Okay, so that's really important. Spirit has the highest authority. The soul has to come under the authority of the spirit. And your body has the least authority. So we have to continually train in the pain to get our body to come under the authority of the soul and the spirit. I'll read you uh, uh, this verse by, cha by John chapter 3, verse 2. So, beloved, I pray that in every way you may succeed and prosper and be in good health physically, just as I know that your soul prospers spiritually. So how do we change the stress response? Well, we need to change our belief system. So if you're following God's plan, then your life purpose is going to get lived out. And if you're following your own agenda, then your life purpose won't be realized. So your beliefs. Now that determines the way that you think and the way that you feel. And the way that you think determines the way that you're going to act. And your action will determine the outcomes. And the outcome then is predictable. So we need to be really careful in what we choose to believe in because that will determine the results and the choice is ours. So choosing what to believe in. Okay, what's the difference between living in bondage versus living in freedom? Well, the good news of the gospel if you're Christian is that Jesus died and rose again so that we would be free from sin. Sin is a power that enslaves us. So we're no longer bound by the yoke of bondage and now we're free in Christ. But having said that, freedom is always under attack. So what happens if you're living a soul-led life? A soul-led life means that you're always searching for love in people. You're looking for acceptance from people, recognition from others and abundance from others. And you're looking for security from people, right? You're looking for perfection and, and your identity is based in other people and you're always fighting for that victory. That's living a soul-led life. And if you're living a soul-led life, then your life purpose won't be realized. What's the difference now from living a spirit-led life? And that leads to freedom. So that's acting from perfect love from God. That's from God's acceptance and God's recognition and God's abundance. Uh, that's the security in God, walking in excellence, knowing your identity in God and from God's victory. That's living a spirit-led life. So how do we build up some spiritual discipline? Uh, well, that starts with studying the Word of God. That means get into the Bible, open it up, uh, get a journal, and you know, write down some verses, things that uh, that are meaningful to you, and start memorizing that. So worship, soak in God's presence, uh, seek God's face, and enjoy that process. You know, don't focus on just the outcome of just finishing something. It's you know, just be in that moment. I'll tell you what I do. Uh, when the first thing I do when I wake up in the morning is I just get down on my knees and I pray. Uh, that's the first thing I do. Then after that, I'll get into the Bible. I'll read some uh, some verses, uh, and then I get on my general. Uh, that's the beginning of my day every day. Uh, let me read you um, a verse from Romans chapter 12, verse 2. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you're going to be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. So to live by the Spirit, we have to walk by the Spirit. Uh, that's with personal integrity, 
a godly character, moral courage, and a conduct that's empowered by the Holy Spirit. Our soul is made up of our mind, will, and emotions. Our mind is our intellect and excellence. That's wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Our will, well, that's expressed by desire and choices and willingness and consent. God's will becomes our plan. Our emotions, that's enthusiasm for God's plan, the burden for God's people, excitement for what God will do today. So enjoy that process. Don't focus on the outcome. Let me read you um, a verse from Psalms 143, verse 11. So for your name's sake, O Lord, preserve my life and your righteousness. Bring my soul out of trouble. How do you take care of your body? Well, it starts with proper fuel, so eating fresh, raw, organic fruits and vegetables. It also means getting adequate rest, so going to bed early, getting up early, and keeping a consistent schedule so that you get proper restorative sleep. Also, ex exercise regularly, minimum of five days per week, and you should have that planned out like on a daily basis, on the week, month, and even uh, a year in advance. Your structural and functional chiropractic care, are you following the scheduled appointments? And are you controlling your addictions? So not eating too much, not drinking too much, controlling the amount of TV, internet, and cell phone and tablet use that you're, that you're doing. And don't forget the train and the pain because that's where all the growth happens. I really like this verse here by 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verse 27. No, I strike a blow to my body and make it my slave so that after I have preached to others, I myself will not be disqualified for the prize. So the bottom line is that stress causes subluxation of the spine. Subluxation is a misalignment and a decrease in motion of the spine. Stress has a direct effect on your nervous system. That has an effect on your immune system, your blood pressure, your organs, your discs, muscles, and joints. And we always experience three different kinds of stress, like I talked about earlier, physical, chemical, and emotional stresses. And that leads to your sympathetic nervous system from overreacting. I'd like to share with you uh, a little bit of uh, research that shows the effect of chiropractic care on reducing uh, anxiety. So this was uh, published in the Journal of Vertebral Subluxation uh, back in 04, and they looked at the uh, the effect of subluxation correction on mental health, and which basically produce a reduction in anxiety in a female patient under chiropractic care. And the conclusion was this, that over a four month course of care, medication was discontinued successfully, symptoms of anxiety and headaches reduced 80% and 90% respectively, function and quality of life increased, and these improvements suggest a positive change in mental health and function may be associated with subluxation correction from the application of chiropractic care. I'd like to share with you uh, one more research article uh, showing the effects of upper cervical adjustments, how that can improve mental function in children. Uh, so from the abstract of this, this report shows that there's an abrupt improvement in mental and motor deficits in a 14-year-old girl after the initiation of specific upper cervical adjustments. Uh, so this was basically the story of a 14-year-old girl who had the verbal ability of a three-year-old couldn't really speak, used single words, and she was medically diagnosed with psychomotor seizures and a degenerative neurological disorder. Um, she had these crazy staring spells, never made eye contact, her left hand was barely used. Okay, so after two weeks of chiropractic care, she started making eye contact, and within two weeks, she was forming sentences, standing straighter, using her left arm normally, and she began to engage in family conversations and activities. So that's pretty amazing. In another study, it was shown that chiropractic adjustments improve brain function. So this was presented at the International Research and Philosophy Symposium. So it showed that chiropractic adjustments have a positive effect on the, on the central nervous system, specifically on the four primary frequencies of the brain function. That's the beta, alpha, theta, and delta frequencies. So to summarize, adjustments affect your central nervous system. So that means stay well adjusted. Keep up with your physical fitness and your routine. Have a proper informational diet. That means you may need to limit the amount of time that you spend on social media and listening to the news and have proper mental loops. And, and that could be things like you know, practicing constructive things like tell yourself, hey, I'm a good person. I got this. Today's going to be an awesome day. I can do this. You know, simple stuff like that that you tell yourself on a, on a continual basis, those are powerful tools. These affirmations can help to focus your mind and establish a consistent tone of empowerment. Okay? So also, um, 
use proper mental and have a proper mental and spiritual attitude so express gratitude love joy happiness you know pray and meditate have a proper sleeping routine really important be on purpose you know dream have some dreams and and figure out some goals to get there uh it's important to use smart goals so smart goals are specific they're measurable they're achievable they're relevant and they're time bound so find your mission and live a passion oriented life so hopefully that was some good information for everyone uh, and that you're able to take away some uh, some things on how to deal with your stress um, so stay strong we'll see you on the next one